news emerged this morning. Mm-hmm. Rich Homie Kwan, uh, Atlanta legend, somebody who obviously we've all spent plenty of time listening to throughout our careers. I was lucky enough to interview him about a year ago. Uh, Rich Homie Kwan passed away, and uh, word on the street is that it was an accidental drug overdose. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's a very sad situation. Who wants to go first in terms of just thoughts um, well, and, and experiences can we, with him? Can we pull up? Uh, or like interview with him? Yeah. Oh, you said the interview. Yeah. What, what you want to pull up? To, I just wanted to see the article. Of it. I was gonna oh. say that uh, you know, just remembering when some type of way first came out and what an impactful record that was. He changed like, music. You really couldn't he, go anywhere without hearing that, and I, and I feel like he's an understated influence in the transition of Atlanta being predominantly like a straight rapping base city to uh, like you know the typical rapper is going to be more melodic coming yeah, out of ATL. Yeah, he, he started. He was a big part of that. I'm not going to give him soul no, credit. No, he started uh, the YFN Lucci style flow. Yeah, yeah, YFN yeah. YFN yeah. Lucci took his flow, tweaked it, mm-hmm. and made it something that was more grand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or where I feel, I mean, not to cut you off for too long, no, but no, where good. I Come feel uh, Rich Homie Kwan didn't really reach out after his two year run or well, it was probably three and was because he didn't have the street credibility of these other Atlanta rappers that could bring a hundred people out and two hundred people out and go to the club like you know what I right. mean like and then when he got his money I felt like he picked the wrong crowd at first to try to be attached to. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Absolutely. And mm-hmm. it kind of made him look weird to other people because he was with another crowd when he first started. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. But, I mean, and then whatever the inevitable uh, highly publicized fallout with Thug, I mean, because they were like, a, a, yeah, yeah that, that's really was the beginning of him kind of like fading into less prominence although he, he, will we not say that please get the fuck out my face was like please thug, get the fuck out my face was yeah. thug's introduction to being the hardest rapper in Atlanta because it was a debate between him and Rich Homie Kwan right and every song that they had together thug with this new sound it kind of mm. outshined rich on me i feel mm. like that was mm. like the base of the problem no, that's true. And, and, and like and the thing is though he did do a good job of staying relevant in the early side of that transition like for example the song that uh him and Pee Wee longway got the this bitch young bitch has my b-. that that whole i don't know yeah. if you remember that record to me like that was a hundred bands in my pocket you see it? that record right there i was like okay this is like Quan staying lit with the more youthful wave. What was the other one? Man? From my perspective, as just a fan, <laughs> it felt like Thug and him fell out, and we never heard from that, Rich really, Homie again. Right. It was just like over after that, which I always felt felt like that was kind of unfair, or maybe it just coincided with him not really having the any streets. songs that were really it going crazy streets. at that point. He yeah. didn't have no way to defend himself, and it made him look weak to where no everybody was just riding with Thug. Like mm. you get what I'm saying? Now you know the barbershop got shot up. Now you know it was other shit going <laughs> on. Pops was good. Now you know yeah. Nut got killed, and yeah. Nut was his boy too. He mm. was he's if so. So it's just like mm. you start seeing it wasn't him and Rich Homie got into it. Nut got killed while they was on tour. Mm. Yeah. He stopped coming to the shows. Right. Like at first they it was like, all right, it's cool. Like yeah. it's a little beef going on. But they all bloods they get over it. Yeah. Then whatever happened, happened. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? However, he it stopped happened. coming, right? Cause like, yo, like cause he found out wait, Thug has something to do with this shit, man. Nah, I, 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 I'm not fucking with you, bro. I'm, Allegedly. I'm going. Allegedly. No, sure. But he still for, talking, but bro. he still wanted to put out a lot of that music with Thug yeah. and was talking on No Jumper about like you know, it'd be wanting to reconnect to yeah. it. Like, and Woody, so. Yeah, and Woody was on tour. Yeah. No, listen, bro. Like, I feel like it's unfortunate, too, though, because, like, one, he kind of, like, fell off, but he was, like, working his way back. And then they dropped the snitching, like, the snitching tapes, right? Yeah. But yeah. that was two years ago? 
No, no uh, less because it was after my interview. Yeah, it was less than two because no, that was like like what like uh, like a six like a, months ago, right? It was like a, it was like a year and change ago. Year. The news been over for like six months. The cold part is I had yeah, brought up it was was, no. was brought the news. I had brought up yeah. on No Jumper that you know yeah. that I had heard uh, yeah. stitching allegations and this and that a long time before that, and fools crucified me oh, for uh, it. And I had like fools in my inbox from Atlanta talking all kinds of shit, and then that came yeah. out, and it's not like I'm never happy to hear news like that but it's like you motherfuckers yeah. I've been said that I'm Rich like, homie he denied it formally in October of 2023 so about a year ago but I believe it was a little bit before that like it was month. July 2020 yeah, it was right. July yeah right, yeah right. oh yeah, 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 yeah you see where it says yeah around July so, is yeah. when that shit came out and but, that we I mean I don't feel like we saw a lot happen after that like how much music has he released since then Prior to his passing, right, like, I mean, he's still hard as fuck. So, um, were we paying attention to what bro was? That's my bro, so I'm not tripping. But we wasn't really paying attention to the new rich homie. No, and that's the thing. I don't think though well, the actual a- the music was never the problem. He's an amazing artist. For like, sure. oh, he, tremendous. He was never whack. And yeah. actually, for someone that had that melodic flow, he still would have actual punchlines and other shit yeah. in his music. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. That you see, like, the Rilo Rodriguez is of today doing that. I don't know. I'm not going to say that's a direct lineage, but there's. He's his influence is understated, and you know, our condolences to him and his family. This is a horrible news. Yeah, that shit is crazy. It's hard, Gosh. man. Yo, listen, man. Like, and I don't know how many times we would have to say it or do this, man. But yo, stay, bro, stay off the drugs, man. Right. Right, like, listen. Facts. Easier said than done. Facts. How, bro, just stop. Just stop taking it. Right. But, but like, okay, you haven't done it, so it's easy to say that. Yeah. Like, for people who actually do drugs, that that yeah. advice does not sound yeah, very valuable. Work. To be just totally stop honest, yeah. It. Like, oh yeah, uh, for sure. Stop it's like telling it me, uh, stop eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I wasn't gonna say. That's yeah. the most yeah. self-aware yeah. thing. That yeah, I respect you saying. No, that. but that is like yeah. a fucking a guy with a super healthy metabolism who's in mm. great shape saying like, hey, fatty. Yeah. Don't eat the burgers. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, yeah, well, I mean, I've been doing this while my whole life. I'm burger. used to it. It makes me feel good. I like it. Like Gives it. me a reason to live. While he's eating the burger right next yeah, to yeah, you yeah. in shape. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it, it's not, it, it's, it's obviously, it's not something anybody wants. No one aspires to be a drug addict. It's, you know, it's very unfortunate. And of yeah. course, as an individual, you know, we have to bear responsibility for the bad decisions we make. You know yeah, what I mean? Course. But like. No, like, hey, bro, hey, bro, which is why it's kind of like, for example, right? It sucks when you find out like how people die, because there's certain deaths where yo, yo, like we can have a lot of sympathy for. Meaning, oh my God, bro, that's just so fucking unfortunate. But overdose ain't one of them deaths. Right, like where's where's like right? You got like, unlucky. He rolled the dice. Yeah, exactly. You feel me, whoa, right? Like, we're like, oh my god, whoa, whoa. right? So we don't feel bad if we, we don't get bad. If someone bro. gets killed, I'm like, oh fuck. Okay, man, I so I did yeah. presumably the thing that killed him. Yeah. I did the other day on this podcast. Swifty uh, Blue gave me a goddamn ten, and I took it. You took drugs from Swifty Blue, and you thought, and hey, I had man. a few people hit me up and say, why are you taking Swifty Blue drugs? <laughs> hey man, but I'm just listen, saying, man, we all love love roll the dice. I love Swifty. But I wouldn't necessarily trust a, a drug from out of his fucking pocket. So, yeah. That's how good the tens are. Yeah. Yeah. You'll take one for Swifty Blue. I know it's fucked. Yeah. You feel me? So, so we're not sad? Did you, no, we're did sad. Did you have a point in your day where you were like, yeah, just definitely at the hospital on speed now? Did you yeah. have a little narc? That, that was, it was nighttime. I felt great. You're not a sure. pussy. Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, my bad. No, no, <laughs> no, again, we are sad. It's unfortunate. I'm just yeah. saying that it's certain deaths where it's kind of like, damn, bro. Like, that's fucking unfortunate, man. I feel bad for the nigga, bro. Why he... But... Overdosing on drugs that you voluntarily put put in, in, in your mouth is one of those deaths. Did it happen in his sleep? Uh, I don't know. We don't really know. Huh? Yeah, we don't know enough details actually it's like, properly. Some even. people just be afraid to tell people that they don't feel good. Like, yeah. hey, mm. this don't feel like a perk. Fast. Get me somewhere fast, please. Yeah. Like, as soon as it kick in, you start feeling that shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this yeah. ain't it. The fast. Because I mean, I don't know if I was fighting for my life or I was just high, but it's been times where cold showers and air conditioners. Revive your ass. You got to shock yourself. You got to yeah. keep shocking yourself. And if you can't shock yourself in the first little two, three minutes, go to the hospital. 
No facts, man. Right. Get your ass. And I'm not, it's easier said than done. But it's just like, man, mm. don't be afraid to tell your friends that you're not feeling. Or have a fin tester, right? Like at the crib. I mean, I got a couple. That's of actually them. not bad advice at all. Yeah, like, right. They're not everywhere. Like rich. They're, Is that shit like pragmatic to do in a normal situation? Like, is it pretty fast and everything? Yeah. 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 It's just like the police little mm. turn blue. It's like yeah. a COVID okay. test. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Nah, it ain't a COVID test. No. You come back faster than no, that. I'm just saying, yeah, at like at the most, it's like five minute process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All my years of being around people doing drugs, I never heard anybody even mention testing their drugs one time. But I will say that when you go to those music festivals and shit, you would see a lot of people doing it at those little tents that they would have. That's what I was going to say. Like, if they're you're, just buying that shit right there. Yeah. Well, if you're yeah. from rave culture, that's always been a thing. Like, they, they like you know, raver has always been testing e pills, make sure it's, mm-hmm. you know, since back in the day. But that's actually really good advice yeah, having fantastic. narcan on deck that needs to be normalized and, and narcan? narcan is uh so if you overdose narcan is a way to potentially revive you like it's you said it's the system. opioid dj vlad hey hey we're we're on stream right now just so you know Oh, y'all on stream. Yeah. Hey, Vlad, it's Flacco, man. And listen. Flacco says hi. Bro, I, I love Vlad now. Hey, 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 and Lush say what up, too. And Lush also says hi and Break Baby. Hey, Vlad, I yeah. love you now, bro. Yeah, what up, y'all? Yeah. Crack it, bro. Break Baby on TV next week. Yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah, I wasn't going to play. Let's go, Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to fucking Brick. Bro. What were you I'm calling to tell geek. me? You're going to congratulate me on my ill raps? Uh, hey, man. <laughs> 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 it was cool. I think I think the flow needs a little bit of work, but it's your first song. Fair enough. I think the lyrical content was so on point that it kind of made up for the flow being a little goofy. Yeah, the lyrics were cool, but the flow needs a little bit of work. But you know, it's not like you're gonna get on a bike and you know start start doing you know wheelies on your first day. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Next time you hear me on a crazy trap uh, or drill beat is is gonna be out of control. People are gonna be like, "How is he getting that much better this faster?" Can you DJ our next cipher? Yeah, hosted by DJ Vlad. Yeah, can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're trying to bring you back to your DJ roots and get you to to produce it or, or DJ. Oh, it's a mixtape. Yeah, we need Vlad the Butcher back. Where's Vlad the Butcher? Bring me back to my Vlad the Butcher days. Hey. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what it is. Hit me up after you go with the street. I'm going to chop it up with you. All right, for sure. I'm all up. Before I let you go, though, man, rest in peace, Rich Homie Quan. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Oh, oh, oh. That's what we've been talking man. about. I just, I just found out. Yeah. I found out. Actually, I did his first ever interview in 2013, right, when his first song, Some Type of Way, dropped. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah no, his first interview. I did the historian. The lobby of his apartment. Man, oh, thanks. Vlad, the historian. Sad, sad day for him. Right uh, I'm gonna hit you after. Oh wait, Vlad. Wait. Or, what are you saying, Flacco? Vlad, listen, bruh. Fuck yeah. Marlon Wayans and Vlad. Stop paying them bitch ass niggas forty thousand, man. Feel me, man. Listen, listen. But they're not worth it, Vlad. <laughs> the niggas, they, Vlad. I'm with you, Vlad. Vlad, I'm with you, bro. Dumb bragging niggas don't deserve that, man. 